welcome everybody uh, to the Mobilize Your Plant Maintenance with SAP Visual Enterprise and Accenture Blueworks. Uh, my name is Matt Parker. I'm the head of marketing at LeverX and want to welcome you to the webinar today. Uh, our speakers today are John Irvin, uh, LeverX's Director of Digital Transformation, and Quentin Clement, the lead business architect uh, at Accenture. I want to thank everybody for attending. Uh, just a, a couple of housekeeping rules. Uh, on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see uh, some meeting tools uh, that allow you to uh, ask questions or post chats. Um, we are going to leave the lines muted uh, so that we can keep the background noise to a minimum. Uh, when you have questions that come up, uh, please type on the or click on the questions tab and, and uh, type in your question. I uh, will review and uh, discuss those at the end of the webinar. Okay, so thank you very much. With that, I'd like to turn it over to John. Thank you, Matt. Well, hello everyone and welcome. Uh, again, I'm John Irvin. I'm the Director of Digital Transformation for LeverX. I'm a 36 year industry veteran uh, specializing in PLM and visualization. Uh, with me today, we have Quentin Clement. Uh, Quentin is the lead business architect for a product called Blueworks, which is uh, owned by Accenture. So I'll let Quentin talk a little bit more about that when uh, it's his uh, turn to speak. So if we cover the agenda today, we're going to go um, about us. I'm just going to give you uh, a minute on who is LeverX so you know who we are. Then I'm going to talk about what a digital twin is and how we can visualize these digital twins across all lines of business, whether it's engineering or manufacturing or plant maintenance or you know serving your supply chain. And uh, then I'm gonna talk about the SAP products, which help us accomplish this. And then we're gonna get to the Accenture Blueworks, which plugs right in and takes all of these wonderful digital twins and can really make our plant maintenance exercises across multiple plants very efficient and streamlined. And then of course, um, we're gonna go for the Q&A session and Matt told us how um, you can all ask questions. So without any further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you a little bit about LeverX. So we were formed in 2003. Um, we have just over 1,100 employees. As you can see, we're a global corporation. We're headquartered in Mountain View, California. I'm located in the Troy, Michigan data center, uh, and Matt is too. And then we also have an office in King of Prussia, which is uh, very close to Philadelphia. And then our, our European, um, counterparts. Um, we've done a lot of SAP and Siemens projects where SAP and Siemens partners, both Global Alliance partner for Siemens, we're a um, SAP Silver partner, and um, we've had close collaboration with SAP for over 18 years. So what does digital transformation and digital twin mean? I mean, these terms get thrown around so broadly today. But at its base form, it's about using digital assets to organize them and come up with one single source of the truth that your entire enterprise and your extended supply chain, of course, securely can access this information. So it's, it's a very powerful transformation if, if you can get to that point because visual data is easier to consume and enables better collaboration and far more um, efficient decision-making by uh, leveraging these lightweight digital twins. So what's a digital twin? A digital twin is a virtual model of a process, a product, even a service. It's the pairing of a virtual and a physical world. And this allows us to analyze data, monitor systems, head off problems long before they occur, prevent downtime, we can even develop new opportunities and plan for the future by running simulations and uh, analytics. And it's the foundation for new technologies like the internet of things, machine learning, big data, blockchain, and asset information networks. So I'm gonna show you how you can take these digital twins and literally visualize them across all lines of your business, whether it's manufacturing, service, asset management and plant maintenance, engineering and construction, the internet of things, product lifecycle management, 
real estate and facility management, and even improve your customer experience. Today, we're focusing on plant maintenance with Blue Works, but I just want you to be aware that your digital twins can serve all these different masters, and it's a very powerful uh, tool to have in your tool belt. So how do we get there? Well, SAP has a wonderful family of products called the 3D Visual Enterprise. They're, they're on-premise and cloud. Today, I'm talking about the on-premise solutions. We'll have other sessions on the cloud solutions. Um, so SAP 3D Visualization includes the 3D Visual Enterprise family of on-premise products and components. These enable 3D and 2D visualization in a wide range of integrated SAP partner and customer applications and solutions. These products are integrated with S4HANA as well as earlier SAP releases and can also be implemented standalone. So welcome to the family. First of all, we have the SAP 3D Visual Enterprise Generator. You wanna think of that as the brain or the heart. It's a scriptable automation engine for creating these lightweight digital twins and your business data integration and storage in SAP. Um, and then we have the SAP Visual Enterprise Author. This is how we further extend our digital twins. We could, it's an authoring tool, runs on your desktop, and we can take the digital twins, which our digital twins are created by CAD data. And we can take this 3D CAD data, make it literally 99% lighter than its CAD counterpart with all the accuracy of the CAD counterpart. And that's important because when we start dealing with large complex products and we wanna see things across multiple plants, we need the ability for things to be very, very lightweight so they'll run on things like tablets, phones, uh, flat screens and whatnot. So the author is a desktop authoring product and that's where we create our animations and put our wonderful notes and renderings and create, enrich this visual content, if you will. Then we have the visual manufacturing planner and that allows us to visually create and edit bombs, materials, routings. So if you've ever created a bomb of material or a routing, and for those of you who don't know, a routing is which components get consumed on which stations of your line in your factory. And that's important because you got to keep track of what you're building so you know when it's time to order new stock so you can keep the line up and running. So um, you can do this all now visually with the manufacturing planner, and it can even make the start of the animated work instruction, which I'm going to demonstrate in a moment. And then we have the visual enterprise viewer. And this viewer is very dynamic. The most important fact about the viewer is it's free. Yes, there are free SAP products, people. And um, it runs on absolutely every platform. So it can run standalone windows on your desktop. It's embedded in HANA. It's embedded in ECC. It can run on your Android device. It can run on your Apple iOS device. And most importantly, with your modern day web browsers, it can run in HTML5. And so what that means, SAP likes to call that UI5. It's really just HTML5. And uh, what that means is all the modern day web browsers, they now ship with a, a web graphics library. So that means you can embed this free viewer from SAP inside with about five lines of code that they give you. And now no one needs to have a viewer because they can view it in Chrome or Firefox or Edge. And, uh, and then last but not least, we have the Engineering Control Center. And we think of that as this beautiful web portal into SAP. So for anyone that's ever used SAP, and I've been using it for over 36 years, we, we know the user experience has grown over years. We've gone from transaction codes, not, you know, which you had to enter in a bunch of ugly letters and with your keyboard, and that would bring up a series of menus. Well, now we have Fiori tiles, so it's all graphical and user interface. Well, on that same concept, think of Engineering Control Center as the Google inside of SAP. It's how we search for any business objects, bombs, material masters, um, routings, uh, maintenance schedules, work orders, production orders, and on and on and on. And, but we get to do that visually now, and it's, it's, it's a very easy user interface. So SAP doesn't have to be complicated anymore. A much better user experience. This is just the viewer that I told you about. It works in absolutely everything. 
some things you can do with that viewer. We have customers that use it to manage their facility and their assets. And this is an example of using HTML5 to um, incorporate the 3D data. And then there's IoT sensors on the pumps and the pipes that we're looking at on the left there. And we actually, in this picture, are depicting where the SCADA sensors are sending real-time telemetry for pressure and temperature um, to the dashboard for the production operator because he might not be in the same plant that he needs to monitor a potential problem on something like that so uh, just an idea of how our customers use the visual enterprise they do facility management they have production operation dashboards and this is all from the digital twin data used across the enterprise they that you know the old way that they used to do things everything was built in excel for your operational method sheets everything was text based when engineering changes happen everything had to be redone to tell the folks on the shop floor a how to build the products and then b how to maintain the plan so the new methodologies if you use these digital twins you have a bomb with matching 3d digital twins and you can create these wonderful visual work instructions and it can be for product assembly you know and then it can be for disassembly. And it can also be for service and plant maintenance. And of course, we can create our, our any bomb, any routing, any material using these interfaces visually. So before we get to Blue Works, I'm going to come out of the presentation for a moment. And I'd like to show you a couple examples of visual work instructions. So we're going to start off as my as my screen paints. Um, with a big fancy BASF plant. And this is just to show you the art of what is possible. Our work instructions don't nearly need to be at this level, but we do have a lot of customers, especially in the oil and gas industries, where they might be managing you know, 50 or 100 oil refineries and they have to take care of all the pipes and all the pumps and all the equipment and all of these plants in real time. So trust me when I tell you, they, they do have a lot of project managers and production managers and maintenance managers, but still to have tools like this, to be able to get your operators to the right spot geographically, working on the right piece of equipment is, is really a game changer. So we're in the visual enterprise viewer here, and this is fully interactive. If I ever wanted to see the bill of materials, I could, it's all here, but we don't really wanna look at that. We wanna look at the user experience that's already been created using Visual Enterprise Generator and Visual Enterprise Author. And it is a fully interactive, I can stop it at any time. I can turn things on and off. And I realize this is going fast, but I wanna get through some of this just to, these are all 3D, digital assets and I can, like I said, I can stop at any given time, like I just did. I can then take the user controls. I'm using my wheel mouse. I can select any of the assets. And really what we're gonna get to is over here, we're gonna do a maintenance and repair procedure on this pump. And we're locating the operator and all this information is uh, geospatially tagged as well. So it'll take your, your maintenance technician directly to the point of um, where they need to start the repair procedure. And then this would really be where they start. Well, before you can work on the pump, you've got to turn the power off. And then this would take them through the procedure of how to do the lockout tag out per OSHA requirements to make sure who's ever going to work on that pump doesn't get electrocuted and that they're safe. It's very visual. Um, these play automatically. I'm just advancing them manually right now. But again, I can stop at any time. I can select things. I can hide things. I can measure things. Very interactive. And this is just the example of step by step what to do and how you can illustrate the points, lock the wheels down, place the jack stand under the pipe in case there's an integrity fail so it doesn't fall and crush you. All these safety procedures before you can do anything, now you have to 
close the valve and lock it down. Now you can move your ladder and get it ready. And then finally you can get down. I'm gonna fast forward here and you can get down to where you actually start. Okay, you know, another great thing about visual work instructions is that you can use symbology. So if you have factories in different uh, geographical locations where English isn't the, the first language, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. You can communicate a lot with symbology. And we have thousands of customers that embrace that methodology. And it tells them step by step. So you get the idea of what, what a visual work instruction is. It shows you the tools, the components, and step by step, everything to do. And um, I'm going to show you one more real quick. And here we're going to talk about how to work. And this is a big custom piece of machinery. And the cool thing is what Quentin's going to take us through is if you do have the 3D assets and you have extended them in such a manner that I'm describing right now with visual work instructions, how you can incorporate this in your SAP ecosystem with Blue Works, which will mobilize this to all your maintenance technicians and uh, really exciting stuff. And we're just going through and it's showing the operator exactly what to do to get this cover off of this blower motor here. We know which direction we should turn the bolts in in case someone didn't know that we have to flip this wedge around, run the bolt in from the back side and lock it down so it's safe. And now I can finally make sure that it's ready to come off. All right, I'm going to stop it right there. I think everybody gets the idea of how digital twins can be used um, within this environment and, and, and how they can add value to uh, every facet of your enterprise. So I'm going to go back into presentation mode right now, and I'm going to turn it over to Quentin, and I'm going to flip slides for Quentin. Anytime you're ready, sir. Quentin, can you hear me? Hello? I assume we are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. John? Yeah, there you are. Okay. Just, I guess it clicked off here for a second, but Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Quentin Clement. I'm with Zag, part of Accenture. We created this software called BlueWorks. And as John mentioned through his discussions, how we we came to be a working as a partner together with LeverX, we want to be able to bring the digital twin aspect of the plant maintenance world in conjunction with BlueWorks, which is a maintenance execution tool that's used by technicians and engineers on the shop floor maintaining and repairing equipment to keep their their factories their plants their gas operations parks recreation lighting and and so forth so without further ado let's go through the slide deck john and jump into the next slide please Next slide, John. Oh, thank you. Why BlueWorks? Customers need to establish their own targeted benefits and solutions criteria. There's some key points about BlueWorks. We provide unmatched functionality. It's a world-class solution which is used globally. We built this product because our customers demand it. It's innovative. It adds value to standard SAP work practice. We have used easy-to-use SAP Fiori-like interface that engages your workforce. Thousands of days of development have gone into building this with decades of SAP EAM experience. So most of us have all come from a enterprise asset management background. And a lot of us have actually been in the field working prior to being in the IT part of the business. Leverage your existing SAP investment. Works with SAP S4 HANA. So that it makes it the simplest option to deploy because it is worth, it is both supported 
ECC 6O and into the new S4 HANA journey. Next slide, please. So mobilizing the SCP plant means, what I wanted to show here is these are screenshots of the actual application. It shows our configuration and administration tile, the work orders, the tiles, what it looks like on a, on a desktop, on a tablet, on a mobile device. It works fully offline, allowing you to continue to work when your connection doesn't. So when, when you're on a mobile or a tablet, it, it, this, our product is an offline tool. We also allow it to be used on any HTML5 browser. So you have a seamless experience, whether it's desktop to a mobile device. Next slide, please. The industries that we support typically are across multiple areas, public sector, oil and gas, parks and recreation, utilities, manufacturing, fleet, just to, just to name them. Any, any asset intensive industry, it is supported by the product. Next slide, please. We're globally deployed, so you can see across the world, we, we have deployed this to oil and gas, mining, public sector, manufacturing, utilities. Processes deployed include fixed plant, distributed network assets, public asset, and vehicles. And it can be deployed to as few as 30 users and well over 2,000 users. Next slide. BlueWorks at a glance, it delivers a quality Fiori user experience covering all the key elements of SAP asset maintenance. It's the same consistent UI for the future of SAP. So if you're, you, your, your company is using Fiori tiles today, it has that same look and feel. So you don't have to have people realize that, they, that it's not that same look and feel that they're used to. It works on a desktop and fully offline on a tablet and phone. So it's one solution for multiple platforms. So the use of user experience and organizational change management is very minimal. It's technical enabled from within SAP using SAP ABAP and Fiori. So it can be installed and configured in days. We don't have any black boxes or middleware. We're installed right on top of your ECC, NetWeaver or S4 HANA system. It's highly innovative. We've created multiple features that are new to SAP mobile asset management, like our inspections, and we utilize GeoMaps, which ties into Esri, Google Maps, and so on and so forth. Next slide. So application access data, this is just showing a screenshot on a mobile device of the different tiles that we have. If BlueWorks is installed on the mobile device, Android, iOS, and it's accessible via HTML5 compatible desktop browser. Users will still authenticate using their SAP credentials, so we don't take any authority away from the back end of SAP. BlueWorks user profiles dictate what master data will come down to their device. BlueWorks and SAP settings dictate what orders and notifications are received. So again, going back to your roles in SAP is what you will get down to your device and it, the SAP is controlled. And BlueWorks data from and to SAP is exchanged when they synchronize their device, either manually and automatically. And I'll get into a little bit more what automatically means by setup in our configuration. Next slide. So if you look at our base functionality, it covers the whole gamut of plant maintenance, work and service orders, notifications, function location details, equipment, bills of materials, you can issue, reserve, and install materials from within the application. We, we utilize the permit system within SAP. Documents and photos can be attached to work orders, to documents. We utilize DMS system. We can do measurement points from here, measurement documents, and rest, measurement reading lists. Next slide. Inspection. So if you, you think of this as one of our key features of BlueWorks. It, we, we truly built this because our customers struggled with <clears throat> the ability to do better maintenance and get, have data that's actually actionable and measurable. So when we use it, what we say by using a configurable inspection, it's linked to work orders, equipment, and function locations. It ties together an asset expansion into an event that users can easily execute. As you'll see here on the right-hand side, you can see these questions that are that have been done, they're flagged to say that they've been completed. 
you will, a technician or an engineer will go out to the site and actually start to execute these inspections. You can update key equipment or functional location records, including classification and status from this. You can create measurement documents. If one of these readings was set outside your parameters, it'll create a notification. So that way, that notification has been out because you found a defect or something out of tolerance that needs to be created or no action. You can just record values, photos, digital signatures, et cetera. You can use these rules within the, the inspection to dynamically change questions based on asset or order values. So you could have a question for, is it gas or electric? And if you answered gas, there may be two more questions to take gas pressure and certification date for it. Maintain a full record for audit purpose. So all of our values from these inspections are stored in tables in the back end of SAP. So these are auditable records that can be dumped out to CSV, it can be dumped out to an Excel, can be dumped out to Power BI or Tableau. And it's a, and then we also have a separate HTML5 online application allows you to query previous inspections. So you can see the results and it's online. This can be tied into your work order as well to be viewed in a separate tab in ECC. Next slide, please, John. Let me get to the next functionality and some other key feature. It's our maps and spatial assets. So as John mentioned, we are moving into a very digital world and how the newer generation of companies are trying to work and interact with their employees to, to have a better user experience as well as a more actionable experience. So you look at your map, you can see your assets on there, you can see where they're located. You can even look for work that's located in the area that, you, that you're working. So if you're a field technician and you wanna go out and look for that, you'll see that. And I'll show that in a little bit once I get into the demo, just so you can see that. We provide the ability to locate assets spatially as points, lines, and polygons with spatial annotations. So what annotation means is if you were working in a utilities or a gas area and said you needed to clear tree line or vegetation away from their management, you could go in and actually annotate that area to say brush needs clearing. So these, the, these types of features of the old way of just sending a notification in, I need to clear brush, but where? Now you can go and put it on a map and actually make it actionable. We provide the ability to take the map and spatial data offline. So that means I can download map data to my device and go offline with it. So you can work in remote areas with this. Next slide, please. So the next one goes into crew. Crew is a tactical workforce, workforce planning app, part of the application. So don't think of it as a planning board. This is a tactical workforce to see what work's been done, what capacities are for the day. So it allows supervisors or crew leads to visualize work by capacity on the calendar, by a work list, by a Gantt chart. This is typically viewed on a tablet and desktop only. Obviously you see here, you can see bits and pieces on a mobile phone, but to get the true breadth of a, once you get into the calendar or Gantt chart, you'd wanna be on a tablet and desktop. You can see where their crew, where they last sync from, recent orders, and phone or message them. So the, the good feature on a phone for a supervisor or lead is they could jump over to the crew tab and being on a mobile device, they could click text or message or even call them from their device because that, as long as you've got your master data set up with the phone number of the crew in there, you can execute that, that functionality. You can change work assignments on the order operations. So if you needed to reassign that to another individual or a different work center, you can execute from here. You can change some SAP work order dates. And this is as SAP allows. So if you need to change a start and end date because somebody was sick or that work was overloaded for the day and you need to move it. And then you also have the ability to enter time on behalf of their crew. So if you were a lead that had four people working for you, you can enter their time from this as you see on the image down on the left-hand side in the bottom corner, there's crew time and you can execute that from there. Next slide, please, John. Coming to our configuration administration site, when I mentioned earlier in the slide decks that this can be stood up in days, this is one of the features of it when we go into maintain the core settings and set up your actual system. 
you will go into here. You'll maintain your core settings to configure your Blueworks to work with your environment. You maintain your licenses from here. User profiles, which are different areas of a plant or manufacturing or field area. That's how you minimize your data. Then you maintain your users and give them the abilities to do certain things within the device. And then inspection templates. As I mentioned earlier, this part allows you to go in and create inspection templates and be able to reuse those in multiple different scenarios. So if you think of the old way of SAP of maintaining a maintenance plan to task list, now your maintenance plan can generate an inspection where these inspections can get tied to a function location or a piece of equipment and actually have actual measures then tied to a work order. Your man, map settings are from here. You'll see we have a translation UI, so we support many different languages. We can translate into other languages from here. And then the crew management. So this allows us to turn the crew management on and assign those users. And in the bottom four tiles, you'll see our monitoring. That's all to do with your user synchronization if there is any errors. So the old way of other applications where they had to go in and do a code search and debug to find this here will start to give your COE or your help desk a lot better area to go and actually troubleshoot if somebody, if a user is having an issue. And then it shows that a number of there, if you've got process and errors or sync errors. Next slide, please, John. Let's talk a little bit about the architecture of Blueworks. So, we we have used SAP and Neptune software. So you'll hear Neptune. Neptune is a digital experience platform which Blueworks is built on top to top of. It's the SAP certified add-on. So what that means is we can rapidly create applica other applications, deploy Fiori type applications from there. So it is a launch pad. This this sits right on top of SAP. It's installed when you install Blueworks. So we don't have any middleware. Where a lot of other of our competitors' products have to use a middleware to touch into SAP. Where ours sits on top, our data compression is there. Syncing is easier and much faster by utilizing that. And as I said, Neptune software is not limited to just Blueworks. It's used in hundreds of organizations to deliver innovative solutions. So they they deliver a lot of out of the box applications that support SAP. So this particular digital experience platform is an SAP certified add-on, so it works with your SAP systems. Next slide, please, John. If you if you look at this, this I wanted just to touch on this. So I know that we're going to be sharing this recording with the attendees today. You will see out there, this is our support site and home where it has everything about Blueworks. So we're not a company that hides what, what our product does. We don't show anything that the product doesn't do. We, you can go through our site and see what the product does, how it functions. We have demonstration apps on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. So I feel free to download those, play with the app, get to know it. It, it does the same thing that I'm going to show you when I go into my demo systems. So you will still have the same functionality that I do and you'll be able to go and see what it can do for you and your company. Next slide, please. Now I'm gonna jump into a demo, quick demonstration and go through the features of Blueworks. So with this screen, I'm in the Blueworks application. This is the screen that they will see once they come through the launch pad and open it up. You'll see you have five tabs along here. Some people will only have four tabs coming across this micro. I have it because I've assigned myself for the demo purpose to be a supervisor and have crew tab in here. And as I navigate through the top here, you'll see we have a home button, which is this screen here. We also have a dashboard view. So I can come into this other view, view where you have quick actions to create notification. A field order is in SAP speak is creating a field order out in the field or an immediate work order that needs to be actioned. And then I can enter time from here. You will see we have a set of filters. So with, with Blueworks, I can save filters, maps, assets, different filters that I want to create. And those those will go with me anywhere I log on, whether I log on from my browser or my my tablet. Those are saved in the back end. Well, anytime I sync my device, these filters will come with it. So 
as you can see here, I've created a few different ones, PMO3 orders. If I click on that, it'll bring me directly into this filter for PMO3 orders that I have assigned to me on my device. And again, the little back arrow there will take you back out, back to the screen that I just was from. Come on over to the next one. This is for my orders. So this is our work orders. They can be filtered by date, priority, type. So if I can take priority in here, you can see how many work orders I have in a very high to high to medium state. I can hide on those. I can click go and go to those. If I go over the next one with notifications, this is all the notifications that are assigned to me in SAP and that have come down to my device. I can filter these again by breakdown, priority, type. So if I go to type, I can see the different notification types, how many notifications that I have assigned here that are gone to me. And again, if I click go, it'll bring me to those notifications in my application. Again, as you see, I navigate back. You also have, you also will have, if I go back to this screen again, you also have this home icon and this will bring you back to the front screen. So lots of user experience and ease of use to jump back and forth between the screens that you've been in. So I'll come back to the home. Let me go down to the bottom right hand corner. We have what's a favorite in history bar. This is, if you will, will be breadcrumbs of where I've been. So if I go to my history, I can see today's date, different notifications I've touched upon, different assets, work orders, and I, this will store my favorites in history from the items that I've touched. If I go over to favorites, I can save different pieces of equipment, function locations as, as favorites. If I click into this, it'll bring me right into that piece of equipment that I've saved as a favorite. And you'll see down here on the right corner, it's just as easy when you're in these screens to, to highlight that star and that will create your favorite. Coming back to the main screen, clicking on the favorite. So when I jump over and then you also have the ability to save places. So if I click on this places, it'll take me into my map. It'll show me where I'm at and it'll show that I've that I want to create a favorite here. And I've created this favorite, so I can click on this and bring it into my favorite. And allows me to go through there. So coming back to the main screen, we finished up with that. Down here in the middle, you have the sync button. So this allows you to sync to the back end. I have a couple different options. I click the sync, it will do a, a sync to the back end. I can also do a download only at any point in time. So if I feel like I need to download from SAP and bring things that have been changed throughout the day on work orders, or I get an, a notification from my supervisor to say that he's made an update, I can just do a download only and I don't have to worry about anything going from my outbox to the back end. Here in the left hand corner, you have your map. So as I showed earlier, I come into my map view. You have different views that I can do with maps. So right now I don't have any GIS layers displayed, but I can choose those because we're tied to an Esri system. I am tied to a Google roadmap right now. And I, you can see the icon where I'm located in North America. And then I can go in here. I have many different options to, to filter on a notification, an order, inspections, assets. So I can see these on a map based on the work or orders that I'm working on right now. So that, as I mentioned earlier, was a, was a very, awesome feature to be able to visualize out in the field where you're working. Jumping up to my work, so those we'll click into here, you can see that we have a little dashboard on each of these icons showing I have 37 orders assigned to me, 30 of them are overdue, two are current, and five are future work orders. These are based on the basic start and end dates in SAP, so they'll pick those up and allow me to do that. Now I'm I'm going to go in here, I, and again, you see that filter was on because I applied it earlier when I was looking for the PMO3 order types. So as I, as I scroll through my orders in this view, you'll see you can view the work by orders or operations. And as I scroll down, you'll see that you have I color coding events. So this is the overdue work orders that I was showing up front, and I can scroll through these. I can type in the search index. So if I was looking for a 33 KV transformer, I can start typing that in there and it'll start picking up 
the equipment or the order header if it was named 33 kv so you can start to search that way from our search functionality you'll see along the top of here you have your orders we have a calendar view then our inspections that i mentioned before that are assigned to the work orders so you can see all the inspections that are assigned to the work orders that are on my device and what's various states that these inspections are in you can see components that are planned and that have been assigned to work orders so all of these materials are on here so i can see that i have all these what's required if any has been received or delivered and the date they're required coming back out to the main screen we'll jump into notifications these are all the notifications that have been assigned to me or created by me and brought down to the device so you'll see from this view in the down in the center i can create a notification so if i clicked on this this will pop up the screen to create a new notification i would fill those all in and with the dollar sign it shows that this notification is in create creation state and because for demo paper i'm not going to save this so i'm going to discard that change it will remove that from my queue jumping into a notification screen you can see that you have all your master data that's pertinent to a notification the type priorities functional locations or equipment again in a lot of our screens you will see that there is underlying function locations so i can hyperlink out to the functional location master data again i can navigate back with the back arrow you have equipment i have the assigned order that this has gone to so i can jump into the order screen from here and drive back Back to the notification, you will see that you have multiple tabs through here, permits, if there was any permits associated with this notification, any items, causes, or damage that goes with it. If you had notification tasks, they would be here. Documents, you'll see within the work order, notifications, function location equipment, we have documents. So we, we are tied into standard SAP DMS and support that either the global object services, your DMS tab, or even a custom repository we can point to. And again, if this had an item on here, you would see that there was there would be a map location. And on that documents tab, Quentin, is that where we would see a digital twin work instruction? Yes, and that's that's something John and I had talked about previous to this. With customers having Visual Enterprise as a free application, you could you could essentially save the visual enterprise to your device and download that. You would have a RH file as, as we called it in the visual enterprise world. And then you could open up that RH file, which would drive you into VE to look at that digital work instruction. Yes. Yeah, so Jumping it would, over. To, it would even ahead, drive you into the visual enterprise viewer or embedded in the same environment in, in your web browser. That's correct. That's correct. Thank you, John. <clears throat> so now we're back out on the main screen. We've looked at my work, my notifications. We'll look at my assets and measures. You'll see in here multiple tabs, my assets. These are all the assets that are defined, assigned to my profile that have come down. <clears throat> so you can see if I click on one of these, it'll bring me into my master data page. Again, we will be able to see structure. I can remove and install this piece of equipment because it's serialized. We support both serialized and unserialized install and exchange. So you can exchange this material for another piece of serialized material and block stock into your warehouse on sync. We can do that in the back end. You can have inspections at the equipment level. So this we also support from the application that you're able to install your do your inspections at the equipment level or the function location so if you had master data updates that you need today there is fields that we can do actual updates from the application into sap and you are also able to put an authorization object against that so approvals can be made before those changes are, are done in the back end again documents tab as john mentioned you would see different documents here so if you had a 
digital twin document could be attached here at this level in the at the equipment, whether it's a work order or even even at the the asset level. Bill of materials. So any bills of materials that are associated with this piece of equipment, we also support that within our application. Coming back out to the main screen, within this last release that we just did, we also do, we support the search of online. So minimizing the data that has to be synced down to the device <clears throat> is quite an innovative feature that's been, been built. So now you're able to go search SAP for an asset data that's not on your device currently. So thinking of a utility worker that's out in the field, you, you there's thousands of power poles and high voltage lines that are out there. You don't want to download all those devices. You're only sending those items to the device that the, the individual is working on. But he's driving out, he sees something wrong. So he could come in here and look for a 66 kV transformer that he was working on and needed this. So if I go in here, I'm going to read assets. Now, these ones that were not on my device, he just searched in the back end and was able to pull these up. So I'm able to click on one of these, be able to retrieve that asset data from SAP, and it will bring it to my, my device. And now here we'll have that ability to go ahead and create here, look in the hamburger icon, I can create a notification, I can create a field order against this. I can even look at the inspection history or any reports against this if I needed further information. Coming out of this screen, you have your materials, so I can do a material search from here. You can choose your plant, different locations. I can click on this. I can issue a material to, to myself. I can create a reservation for that material. So if I needed to issue this material, I clicked on that. I didn't choose that. So I have to go up here, select the, the location, the material, click issue. It would come up. I, the plant and the storage location is already here. It shows me my available balance. I can say I want to issue one, and I want to issue it to the work order that I was just working on. And then I would just go down here and click issue, and that would add that to the outbox, and that part would be issued to me. Coming out of the material search, then you have your measurement points, so you can see all the measurement points that are associated with all the assets that you have on your device. So I click into this, you can see the last readings that were done. And then down here, if I need to create one, I would create the new measurement reading. Go in here and make my change. Save that, and then that measurement reading would get saved to the outbox. Navigate out of here into my reading list. So if I had a list of measurements that needed to be done, you would see that list here. All right, that's that. Let's jump into the outbox real quick. So as I'm interacting with my application, a very powerful feature of BlueWorks is we show you the outbox of everything that you've done. So I, as I mentioned earlier, I did this, this reading. And uh, you you realize that I, I made a mistake before I sync. I could actually come in here and make a change to this reading. Save that. I've saved this reading here. Now that's been updated. So when I go to sync, I actually have the right reading. And I want to issue this material to myself. And I said, Nah. You know what? It's I left it in the truck. I don't need it. To this, I could come in here now, and I can delete this transaction before I sync to the back end. So it's very powerful and allowing you to do any updates prior to syncing to the back end. Again, we've come through here and the last one, my crew, as I mentioned earlier, saw from my screenshots looks very similar to what I show. You can see your committed work for your work centers that are assigned to you as the crew leader. I jump over the crew tab. You can see all the employees that are assigned to you. You can see the last date when they, they synced. Over here, you'll see the different icons that are here, activity, their map, calendar, the phone icon, the message icon. So I can next text them, change them, get a hold of them. I can go and see where they were last synced on a map. And coming here into a calendar view, I can see everything that's been set up for the day. I can change the different variables to days, weeks, and see on a Gantt where everything's been located. Coming over to the work tab, as I mentioned earlier, you can see 
these work orders and the operations that have been assigned to people. If I click on crew, I can see all the people assigned because in my system it's set up based on work center and the employees that are assigned to that. So if I jumped into that operation, I can see that if I need to change basic start date, I can go in here and change that. I can set the priority. This function location is already set up in here, so I don't need to change into that. And then I can save that. So this just shows you how easily you can do that. And again, I mentioned earlier, here's the crew time. So if I had to choose an order that I was working on, the operation, and I was getting the setup for my staff, you could see all the all the operations that were done and the people that are assigned to them, I could start putting time in for them as a as a supervisor lead. So we're getting close to the end of our, our demo time. We've got five minutes left. I wanted to kick back to John and myself and see if there's anybody that has any questions or wants anything answered from the demo that we showed you today. I see the first question coming in, Matt. It says, what if I don't have 3D CAD data for the components I want to maintain? Well, that's a pretty good question. So, depending on the number and the scale of the missing components that you don't have CAD data for, this can be easily dealt with. Um, I think there's, I'd say there's three different options. Your first option is white and blue laser scanning. So, with that one that I showed you, of the plant, the big giant BASF plant. Um, we took uh, white and blue laser scanners on site and that's how we captured all this data because I promise you they didn't have data for all these plant components. Um, of course, offshore modeling um, in other countries is very, very inexpensive if it's not proprietary data, let's qualify that. And uh, you can also, Nowadays, there's these things, SAP has one, it's called the Asset Intelligent Network. And a lot of our components within our plants are standard off-the-shelf components. I get that every plant has many customized machines, but there's a lot of stuff we get off the shelf. So nowadays, wh whoever you're buying your equipment from, <coughs> guarantee they probably have 3D data that they're willing to give you for free. So that, that, that's how I would deal with that. An asset intelligent network or um, pay someone offshore, a firm offshore to actually go into a CAD package and model it or white or blue laser scanning. Okay, yeah, thank you, John. Uh, next question that came in, uh, how many CAD formats are supported by Visual Enterprise? Well, another good question. Um, Visual Enterprise, uh, reads and writes over 120 different CAD formats. Um, I've been with the product line a very long time, and I can count the times on one hand that I ran into a situation where Visual Enterprise couldn't read it. And, and those times on that one hand where I couldn't read it, it had to do with plant data and, uh, you know, um, things like BIM data. So, um, SAP realized that and they went and got a partner who now writes the plugin to do all the plant CAD systems, Aviva, Smart Plant, Tecla, Revit, to name a few. So um, now there is nothing in my lifetime that I've seen that Visual Enterprise can't read or write with that other plugin, but 120 out of the box. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. I think we've got one more question that's come in. Uh, how does BlueWorks stack up against its competition? Thanks for that question. That is a good question. So if you look at BlueWorks overall as a as a as a product, it it is very competitive in the market. BlueWorks allows you to use your current platform of S your current SAP environment where we install right on top of it. So you, you get to leverage your ABAP developers in your environment. So if you look at the, the functionality of BlueWorks with Esri tied in with Google Maps, with the inspections, out of the box, you're getting thousands of hours 
and decades of experience of development time. Just an incredible product. I, I've been in the industry more than 25 years. I joined Zag in this journey over a year ago and just I've been blown away with the product and the customers that are using it and the things that we've learned in the past year. Thanks for that question. Hey, Quentin, I see one more for you. Um, okay. What am I going to have to update in my SAP system to make sure that this product works? Nothing. If you're on the, if you're on ECC 6.0, Enhancement Pack 4, or even on S4 HANA, you don't have to update anything. We're going to install this with a set of transports in your system and stand it up. And within a couple of weeks, we'll start configuring and setting this up and starting to be able to use it. Very good question. Thanks, John. That's awesome. I'd like to say one quick thing. Sure. On the last page of the presentation, there's some wonderful links for some more demonstrations and the digital twin blog articles that LeverX writes and uh, some visual enterprise information. Uh, please feel free to check that out. Back to you, Matt. Okay. Well, that will, uh, if there aren't any further questions, that'll conclude our session for today. Again, thank you for attending this uh, informative session with LeverX uh, and Accenture. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.